Hey everybody, it's David. So huge news in the world of astronomy this week. A team of European astronomers have announced the discovery of three Earth-sized planets transiting a nearby red dwarf star. This star, 40 light years away, is called TRAPPIST-1, and two of the planets might even be close to the so-called habitable zone of that star. So huge congratulations to the TRAPPIST team on this amazing discovery, and I thought this would be a good time to update everyone about a search we are running here at the Cool Worlds Laboratory at Columbia for transiting planets around the nearest star, which is also a red dwarf, Proxima Centauri. So the inspiration behind our campaign actually goes all the way back to 2012, when I remember sitting in a conference and hearing the announcement of a new planetary system around a red dwarf star in the Kepler data. And I remember at the time the author of this study, Phil Murhead, pointed out that this star, Kepler-42, which has three planets around it, all rocky planets, looks very similar to our nearest red dwarf stars, Barnard's star and Proxima Centauri. In particular, the planets found around Kepler-42 were on very short orbital periods, of order of a day. That means that because they were so close to the star, the probability of seeing a transit is actually really good. So this discovery inspired me and I realized that if we took the planetary system around Kepler-42 and plonked it around Proxima Centauri, it would be surprisingly detectable. So I asked for time on MOSE. It's this Canadian space telescope. It's the size of a suitcase. It weighs less than me. It's internally sometimes called the Humboldt Space Telescope and it has this aperture of about 15 centimeters to observe stars and potentially look for transiting planets. So the reason why we went to most rather than say the Hubble Space Telescope is that this would be far too high risk for Hubble. But a small telescope like most was up to the challenge. So the first time we asked in 2013, even most said this was too high risk and didn't accept it. But in 2014 and 2015, we made a more persuasive case and we got the time and have observed the star twice in May of those two years. So in total, we have about a month and a half of continuous space-based photometry, and we are crunching through that data looking for transits right now. So what's causing our analysis to take an unusually long time to complete is that Proxima Centauri is very active. It makes the star very difficult to correct for and they're able to look for transits. So as shown here, we are searching in terms of the orbital period of the planet on the x-axis and the size of the planet on the y-axis. Now, if you want to find a planet which is capable of supporting life, which really means liquid water on the surface, then you want to find a planet in that green box. That's the water zone. So although I can't tell you about the results of our search yet, I can tell you about the sensitivity. So by simulating fake planets, injecting them into the real data, and then blindly recovering them, we can work out how sensitive our data is to different types of planets. So here you can see that an Earth-sized planet in this green box would really be quite detectable by our most data. Now, as I said earlier, we were inspired by the discovery of Kepler-42 and TRAPPIST-1. So let's put those planets on this same plot, and you can see here that almost all of them should be detectable with the most data. So hopefully I've convinced you that the most data really is sensitive to planets which we know exist around almost identical types of stars. If our nearest star, Proxima Centauri, has transiting planets around it, it would be one of the most important discoveries made in exoplanetary science. These would be worlds that we could not only easily characterize with the next generation of telescopes, but we could even not unreasonably think about visiting these planets with long-term space missions one day. So thank you so much for watching this video. As usual, if you have any questions about this video, just make sure you leave a comment below and we will try to get back to you. To make sure you get all the videos from the Cause Laboratory, make sure you click the subscribe button below. Please do like and share this video with your friends. Your support really does mean a lot to us. Thanks again for watching and stay curious.